You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason. It's your co-host, Danny. Fans, we are here on this holiday season for you, the fans. Let's get to it, Danny. We're going to talk a little bit about the NBA and the Christmas Day recap and also NFL uh, weekend uh, that included Christmas Day, ironically enough. But first, right to the NBA, Danny, where the first game, the 76ers actually prevailed against the New York Knicks, 119-112. Uh, it uh, looked like the Knicks were going to do something here uh, in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, then got competitive. Uh, and then fourth quarter, 76ers just went ahead and pulled away. James Harden with 29 points, 13 assists. Julius Randle, 35 points, 8 rebounds. I mean, 76ers are starting to make a claim here. Uh, Joel Embiid, 35 points, eight rebounds. Joel Embiid has been balling lately, man. Uh, he's been unstoppable. Uh, and this is all with uh, Maxi still recovering from an injury here. He's still out, but man, the 76ers are really starting to pull it together here. What say you about this game, Danny? Yeah, Jay, this one, yeah, New York jumped out in that first quarter lead and then. By halftime, the Sixers had closed that lead down to one or two. It was a good game. I think down the line, this one, because they're so close in the standings right now, this one might may play into that home court, depending on how the standings shake out. And also, too, it was interesting. James Harden went off in this game, and there was the rumors of him trying to reunite with the Rockets. So you just didn't know if there was a, some motivation there to <laughs> – Show off a little bit because this is best. I've seen James Harden play in a while, man. I know mm-hmm. he's he's starting to pick it up now, but it was uh, very interesting that rumor came out mm-hmm. and uh, around this time. But mm-hmm. another thing from the Knicks' perspective, I think too now is they're starting to gel because they had that offseason acquisition of Jalen Brunson, mm-hmm. and I think they're starting to find their roles in the offense and defensively and how they play. I think the Knicks should be strong continue to be strong this was just one of those games where like you said Embiid as long as he stays healthy Mm -hmm. the Sixers are gonna be tough man a tough Mm -hmm. out great win by the Sixers on Christmas Day and then the next game Danny was the Dallas Mavericks against the Los Angeles Lakers uh Dallas prevails 124-115 I don't think the score is really indicative of of this blowout in my opinion Danny um (laughs) The third quarter really did the Los Angeles Lakers in, man. I mean, you mean tell me, Los Angeles Lakers, you allow the Dallas Mavericks to score 51 points in one quarter? That is something on your defense, man. And so LeBron had a good game, 38 points. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, six rebounds, five assists. Uh, nobody else really showed up for the Lakers, man, uh, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. Westbrook. Did have 17 points, uh, five boards, four assists. Uh, Reeves had 16 points, but LeBron was shouldering the load here. I don't know how much longer he can do this. Uh, yep. I think uh, AD is going to be out for a month, and then they'll probably reevaluate him and see where he is. Do you think the Lakers need to make a trade? With AD being out for a full month, yep. the Lakers are now 13 and 20 <laughs> as their record. I don't think they're going to go really anywhere in the playoffs, right? At this juncture, they need to focus in on just making the playoffs, probably the play-in tournament. Even so, that first round, I don't see them really advancing. So do they make a trade here? Or do they just let this contract of Westbrook just to run out, let, me, let Westbrook go mm-hmm. uh, and just be freed up of that $40-plus million contract? What say you? The AD injury really hurt things, especially Mm -hmm. what's what's going on in Chicago now Mm -hmm. with the dysfunction there in the locker room. And Mm -hmm. it looks like there's some opportunities here to pick some people up. 
depending on the team and who's available and what can be returned. Anthony Davis would be a great pickup for the Bulls in return. And it'll be coming home and, you know, the whole narrative when he was considering Chicago way back in the day. Mm -hmm. But it's tough, man, because with AD being out, I think you have no one to trade. Mm -hmm. it, with him being injured, unless the team take, I don't think the team can take that on. And why would they? And you also have LeBron is not getting any younger. So mm -hmm. if you play out the string, it's just playing LeBron more minutes. As he's getting older, you know, things can happen with your body breaking down and you just don't know what uh, father time can do to you. So right. they're in a tough spot, man. That AD injury really put them in a bind for this to make a trade. So I'm curious what they do. I think honestly with him being hurt, you just got to, play what you have because I don't see what else they can trade. They don't have picks. They have those 20, that 27 and 29, but our team's really interested in that. They want players in return, especially like a team like the Bulls where they're close. And if they got someone like AD, I think that would help them and then help that locker room as well. Yeah, right now the Lakers are slotted at the 13th. Well, I'm sorry, 10, 11, yeah, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, the 13th spot in the mm -hmm. Eastern or Western conference. Yep. The 13th spot, two and a half games out of the 10th position, three and a half games outside of the ninth position. And which team do you think would fall back is the other question, right? So if yeah. they get on a run, if you look at the Timberwolves are in 11 spot, the Warriors are in the 10th spot, Utah, Utah. Yeah. maybe. Then you have Portland and Dallas. And, I think they'll they'll they won't fall. I don't think they're gonna fall either. Sacramento is at the sixth spot, three and a half games out of the first mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. Sacramento's playing well, very well this year. Um, so I don't think they're gonna fall. You see, you have Phoenix at the fifth position. I mean, I don't see where the Lakers do this, man. I really don't. Um honestly, I can see Minnesota falling a little bit. And Golden State with the Steph injury. You you just don't know, but mm -hmm. I I still think they have the moxie to they'll make it some somehow some way they'll make it to the playoffs. And just as bad as Golden State has been playing, Danny, they're only six games out of the first seed. Yes. <laughs> so from the first through the tenth seed right now in the Western Conference is separated by six games. Yep. Uh, we look at the Eastern Conference from the first to the tenth seed, eight and a half games. Mm -hmm. I say that to say Golden State's still in the mix to make a move here. All these teams are in the mix to make a move. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some C positioning changes here. Um, and uh, especially after they make you know, after the Christmas Day games, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. There's a push to the all star break. Yep. And then after All-Star, that's when everybody really starts to get on it, yep. uh, if you will. So we'll see what happens here, Danny. The third game of the lineup, Danny, was our Milwaukee Bucks uh, going against the Boston Celtics. Let me just say this, Danny. I, this w was a frustrating game. Uh, first of all, Boston Celtics prevailed 139 to 118, a blowout. It started in the first quarter, quite frankly, 36-28. Uh, Bucks came back uh, second quarter. The third quarter seemed to be um, our demise. Yep. And ultimately, so the Celtics scored 139 points. What is going on with our defense? That's question number one. Mm -hmm. Question number two, what's going on with our offense? What I saw in this game – I turned it off after a while, quite honestly. What I'm seeing in a defensively is they're switching off on to get to have Brooke to to guard the player with the ball because Brooke is slow footed. Um, so defensively, I, I saw that happen a lot. What I also saw was the Boston Celtics uh, making very quick decisions in terms of who they wanted to switch off on or have them all switched off on two like they studied they know who they wanted to guard them and they they attacked the basket 
um, or they attack the their sweet spot on the court. Jason Tatum erupted for 41 points standing, and he dunked on Giannis. What I saw offensively offensively out of the Bucks was slow decisions, mm-hmm. not as much ball movement. I think that's a problem. Um, I think Giannis is handling the ball way too much. This is going back to last year and years past and where Giannis needs, in my opinion, to play off the ball, let the guards handle the rock, let them make the quick decisions, and then ultimately it can come down to Giannis uh, and all making, you know, I think they need to mix it up a lot more and make quicker decisions. I think that would bode well for them. But defensively, I think there's a problem here, man. And, and granted, yes, we're missing Chris Middleton. That would have helped tremendously. I don't know, man. Every time we we Leonis plays Al Horford and Will, that Williams combination, I don't know if the strategy was this: have Giannis control the rock to pull one of those players out, um, or or what? But Something has to be done differently here, man. And hopefully when Milton comes back, we can have Drew handle the rock more, uh, quite frankly. Uh, we have another ball handler in Middleton who could, you know, who could handle it. So something's got to happen. Otherwise, I don't see the Bucks beating the Celtics in a seven game series. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if we get if we were to trade for uh, what's his name, Danny Jay Crowder. Please. Yeah, if we were to trade for Jay Crowder, yeah, that adds some toughness, but I don't know how beneficial that would be. He's a good defender. He can shoot the three or or at least make him come out and, and guard him. But yeah. I just don't know how much that would help us. This is going to be interesting to see when Milton comes back, and I can't wait the next time the Celtics or Bucks play with Milton. Hopefully the Celtics will be a full strength. Let's say you, Danny. You don't know if the Bucks were tired because they are on the, you know, they had a couple games on the road this past week. Uh, they didn't shoot it well from three, 13 for 36, 15 turnovers. Middleton wasn't there. And Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum took advantage, man. They, J- Jalen Brown had 29 himself. So it's one of those games where, yeah, they did get blown out on, on Christmas Day. But once you get Middleton back into the fold, and he was the piece last year that was missing when Boston beat Milwaukee, that you need him in the fold, you need him healthy. And then two, on the Jay Crowder point, I think Jay Crowder in this particular uh, matchup would be a benefit because he can switch on between Tatum and Jalen Brown if they go small ball. He can at least stay with them. I'm not saying he would like sh- straight up shut him down, but he's a player that could at, at least give them a, fi- a fit, give them fits uh, where they wouldn't get those easy shots and he's all in the face and all that good stuff. So it was just one of those games, man, that you were hoping it would be a better showing. But like I said, Milwaukee had a tough week. They had New Orleans, they had Brooklyn. It's over now, and now they can move on. And Danny, on to the Golden State Memphis game, one twenty three, one hundred nine. This game was not as close as I thought it was going to be. This was the highly touted game, mm-hmm. uh, in where John Morant called out the Warriors, called out the NBA, and he wanted to play the Warriors on Christmas Day. He got his wish, and he took this L. <laughs> <laughs> He had a good game though. John Moran had 36 points, man. He had uh seven rebounds, eight assists. I mean, he in the steal. So he was balling. Uh everybody else didn't follow suit though. Golden State, 123, 109. Clay Thompson with 24. Jordan Poole with 32. Divincenzo with 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Golden State Warriors were really up for this game. Something you rarely see. Play dudes talk a whole lot of trash. He was doing some trash talking on this one. <laughs> I told Man. you last time. I told you before we previewed this one. This one was marked. <laughs> There's a lot going on back and forth between them since that playoff series. Ooh, let me just say, Danny, if if these teams meet in the playoffs, boy, watch out. 
And the way it's trending, Jay, they could. They could. Because <laughs> of the player in tournament. Yeah. And if Memphis stays at the top of the conference where they're at right now, seated right now, they could possibly meet in the first round. This um, is the Warriors ooh. make it. Maybe this is something the Warriors needed mm-hmm. to kind of get them going. They've been good at home, but away, that's where, where the issue has been. Yeah. I, I I don't know if it's a psyche thing, mindset. I don't know, but maybe this was a game that could help uh, get them over the hump even away. But man, what a what an interesting game, Danny. The last game was the Denver Nuggets against the Phoenix Suns. I gotta be honest, Danny, I didn't watch this game. Listen, man, I by that time I was heavy into the Christmas spirit. I'll put it like that. 128, 125. The Nuggets Nuggets prevailed. Uh Jokic had from the numbers standpoint, had a triple double, 41 points, 15 rebounds, 15 assists. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I did see the highlight though of Aaron Gordon uh throwing down a uh, a dunk here um in OT. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, Danny, uh, is Jokic the MVP right now? It's hard to take it away from him. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he's hard to argue again, man. His numbers are insane. From a fancy standpoint, if you own Jokic on your fancy team, you got the lottery ticket, man, because he puts up numbers every night and he's consistent. He's always mm-hmm. on the court and he plays a lot of minutes. He played 44 minutes in that game because they went to OT. Mm-hmm. And he's always out there. And he's always producing. So it's hard to argue against that. And now they got Jamal Murray back, too. I, I was going to say, man, Jamal Murray with 26 points. Uh, I think he's starting to kind of mm-hmm. come back here, Danny. I think we need to start really paying attention to Denver Nuggets, man. The only thing with the Nuggets is their bench. They're not deep. Mm-hmm. So if one of their key players gets in foul trouble, they're in trouble. But uh, if they're those guys can stay on the court because they put up a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. They those do. starters, their bench is not deep at all. So that may be something Denver does at the trade deadline is getting some bench depth because they need it. Because they, I don't know how much. Because if they get to the playoffs, they're gonna be gassed. But Jokic had a heck of a game that night. That was mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> it mm-hmm. was a heck of a game too. I watched a little bit of it, and it was, uh, it was exciting and. To watch what they did and what he did. So that was a great nightcap game for those yeah. of you who stuck it out. Yeah, Denver right now is a half a game ahead of New Orleans Pelicans. This Western Conference is going to be interesting in the top three positions here. And I think we're starting to honestly see um, a passing off of the torch. When you start looking at Denver Nuggets, the New Orleans Pel- Pelicans, and Memphis Grizzlies, they traditionally haven't, you know, been in the front runners. Maybe Denver past couple of years with Jokic, but you starting to see some of the other teams kind of fall back here. Danny, Golden State, Utah falling back here. Uh, we thought Minnesota was going to do something, but I don't know what's going on in Minnesota, Danny. I, I just don't know how that Twin Tower ish type deal is working. The Los Angeles Lakers falling back. Houston Rockers, very, you know. They're young. Got some new teams, Sacramento Kings. Got some new teams or newer teams coming to to the front here, Danny. So this Western Conference is going to be a young crew. So that's going to be interesting second half of the season. Also, Danny, it's just interesting at how, just as we have our typical NBA Christmas Day lineup, we have a few games here on Christmas Day for uh, the NFL. Uh, One game in particular, the Green Bay Packers. Prevailed against the Miami Dolphins 26 20. Tua actually threw three interceptions. Come to find out, he's in concussion protocol right now. Mm-hmm. So I think that happened after the game that he, he got in the protocol, which that to me is, is, is very um, tricky. It's very mm-hmm. concerning, in my opinion. Um, don't know exactly when he got a concussion. And he still played. So that's something that the NFL, the Miami Dolphins is going to have to, you know, deal with and rectify, man. I I don't know, Danny. This may be the, the beginnings of Tua's NFL career being done. 
what team would want to take on that? I can't say liability, but yeah, you know, potential liability. And he's coming up on a contract. Mm-hmm. You know, so I that's going to be really interesting to see how this turns out for Tua. But nonetheless, man, the Packers keeps their playoff hopes alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's getting a stronger, stronger heartbeat week after week, it seems like. They have the Vikings and the Lions. They have to win out, and they need some help. But Aaron Rodgers throws for 238 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Um, they're still not, getting, in my opinion, getting enough from their running game, man. They only get 79 yards rushing um, and all. Uh, but the secondary finally showed up, I guess, in the fourth quarter here, Danny. Alan Lazard, five catches for 61 yards. Christian Watson, six catches for 49 yards. And he actually went out with an injury, hip injury. Romeo Dobbs, three catches for 36 yards. These games against the Vikings and Lions are going to be telling. I believe, though, the Packers can win those games because they are they are in Lambeau. Yep. I honestly thought that with this Christmas Day, the Packers would be going down to Miami, getting ready, uh, getting set to make some off-season plans. <laughs> Because they'll be partying too much down in warm Miami, but it wasn't as warm because there was a cold freeze going <laughs> going across the nation. And I think at the time of kickoff, it was like only 40-something degrees in Miami. Yep. Go figure. So Packers were right at home, quite quite honestly. What say you about this game, Danny? Packers of Miami, a thank you note. Because <laughs> they just gifted this one for them. It was Mostert fumbled the ball. Two is three interceptions. They missed a field goal. It was a comedy of errors in the second half, man. That was – and Miami, at one point, Green Bay tried a, a fake punt in their own <laughs> side of the field. Did not work. Miami only ended up with three out of that. I thought if they would have scored a touchdown there, it would have been 27-10, I believe, at that time. And this was in the first half still. But they didn't convert. And in that second half, they had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And Green Bay took advantage of it. Their defense stepped up, made plays. And Miami is looking at a possible playoff elimination game this weekend. They played New England. But they have they costed themselves. So I'm curious where Tua's injury actually happened and if that affected his throws. Because his throws are – like there were people running underneath. He was just completely missing them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was just airmailing passes. So I – I don't know if that impacted him or not, but um, I'm hoping all the best for him and he takes the time he needs to get healthy. And if he has to make some life decisions, man, just because concussions are nothing to play with. Obviously we've seen Mm -hmm. um, personally, you know, and then, you know, in the NFL, they've, you know, highlighted that obviously and put money towards it, but it's a dangerous game. And anytime, man, your head gets slammed against the ground or someone hits you a, a wrong way, you could be done. So I'm hoping all the best for him and uh speedy recovery. Some of the games here that happened on Christmas day uh, was that of the Broncos and Rams. Man, what a, a drugging by the Rams. <laughs> 51 14. I didn't waste my time watching this game, Danny. The Broncos went ahead and fired head coach Hackett. Uh, he's no longer with them. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, the last game uh, of Christmas Day was Buccaneers Cardinals nineteen sixteen. Uh, by the Buccaneers, they win. They're still alive in the playoff run here, Danny. What say you? Buccaneers game. They came back. Cardinals had them sixteen to six, and they made a run and took that took that victory. And the Rams game, Cam Akers went off, but there wasn't much to watch here. That game was not good at all. And your Falcons takes his L seventeen nine. It happened on Saturday against the Ravens. What say you? Desmond Ritter played well. There were some questionable calls, man, in this game on us in the red zone. A couple of holds and a couple of offensive penalties that cost us this game. It was close, and we had a chance at the end, and we couldn't convert to tie this game. Step in the right direction for Desmond Ritter. Tyler Algier had a good game. Uh, we didn't score any touchdowns, but we had a couple called back. 
Baltimore has some home cooking. So anyway, tough lo- tough loss. We're out, officially eliminated from the playoffs, and we have Arizona this week. So it'll be another game for Desmond Ritter. See what he can do. Hopefully, take advantage of the Arizona Cardinals and possibly get a W. Thank you for joining us at Back Ports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.